Um, when I was reviewing the, um, the document of our next speaker, I said, cacao, that's easy. Chocolate is easy to sexify. But how about balatong? Do you guys know what balatong is? Uh, we have to all send you back to Agricultural School 101. But allow me introduce, to introduce Vice Mayor Roberto Agayli. And earlier, I think he was very enthusiastically talking about his city, the Hmong capital of the Philippines, in Isabella, Vice Mayor. Thank you very much to our beautiful uh, MC. Our, uh, thank you very much for your kind introduction. Yes, good afternoon to everybody. In uh, our municipality, we believe that in order to save the world, we need five foods. Rice, corn, banana, ampalaya, and this afternoon, we will be discussing mungbin, mungo sa Tagalog, balatong sa Ilocano. Okay? So, in the Reader's Digest, as I have said, these five foods will save the world. The municipality of San Mateo is a first-class municipality located in the province of Isabela. The municipality's main source of livelihood is agriculture. Previously, the main crops were rice and corn only, but later on, mungo was introduced to the farmers, and consequently, it has become one of its major products. When I was elected mayor in 2001, there's a big problem in our municipality because there is a, uh, what we call, redux, reduction of our produce of palay. So it's a big problem because of the overuse of uh, chemical fertilizers. And the information was very alarming because the town is an agricultural municipality and because of this decreased yield of palay, denotes lesser income for the farmers and reduce income to the farmers implies poverty. To give solution to the problem, the local government introduced the rice mungo rice cropping pattern. Palay is planted twice a year and the rice fields and mungo was planted as an intercrop. Planting of mungo is done every summer when the municipality is experiencing drought brought about by the scorching heat of the sun. Mungo is an exceptional crop because it does not need water or any kind of fertilizer to nurture. Its roots have a nitrogen-fixing bacteria that restores the fertility of the soil just in time for the planting of palay. And to help the farmers, LGU, launch the Plant Now, Pay Later scheme. The scheme allocated 20 kilos of mungo seeds to every farmer which they used to start up the mungo production to be paid with mungo seeds after their harvest. The program became successful. Soon enough, the people of San Mateo discovered the potential of mungbin. It is income generating Farmers can still earn additional income during the idle months when the rice production is not feasible. The return of investment is more than 100%. A production of 800 to 1,000 kilos of mungo per hectare at a minimum price of 55 pesos translated the income ranging from 44,000 to 55,000 per hectare in 60 days. This means 238 million to 200 to 300 million additional income during the summer for the farmers of San Mateo. For the past years and until this year, the price of mungo can reach 50 pesos to 60 pesos per kilo. And based on the records of the Department of Agriculture, the yield and income of mungo has steadily increased. The return of investment is 132 Second, 
Mungbin is nutritious. Mungo is rich in protein. Thus, the abundance of mungo in the locality resulted to the decrease of malnourished children in the municipality. Next, it generates employment. Due to the synchronized mungo production, whom mungo harvesting season, landowners are obliged to hire additional farm workers with an average of 15 up to 50 farm workers per hectare. You try to look our uh, presentation there now. And uh, the next, it, the mung bean has pro post-production benefits. After harvest time, mungo farms can be utilized as forage of farm animals, and moreover, the trash pads are used for mushroom production, which is also additional livelihood for farmers. And through mungo production, people are empowered, especially the farmers as shown in the sharing scheme. Yeah. So anyway, indeed, in this small seeds, mungo or mung bean, can create jobs, additional income to our people, and most especially now, because of the introduction of farm mechanization, the agricultural worker, which they don't own the land, which are, the, the, and are displaced of that one. And because of this production of mung bean, we were able to employ 300 to 400,000 people to harvest mungo in our locality, which is 7,000 hectares. And in short, the 7,000 hectares at 1,000 kilos per hectare, we produce more than 7 million kilos in just 60 days. So with this, uh, we would like to thank our organizers of this for inviting us and presenting this uh, intercrop program in our municipality, the Rice, Rice, Mungo. Thank you very much.